Hi folks, we thought we'd show you something interesting from the backyard. Here's a succulent that's growing in the backyard. And you see these two little black specks here. That's not dust or debris. Those are actually little living organisms. We'll look at them magnified here in a second. But we wanted, since we're on the subject of microbes, to show you aphids growing on this succulent. They're really cute. But one thing that's really interesting about them is that they have a microbe living inside of them. Now they use this stylet, this uh, thing that you see close up to the body there, to pierce through the plant and drink phloem out of uh, the phloem parts of the tissue. Here's an aphid with his little stylet punched down into the plant, and he's drinking nutrients straight from the plant. That's how they get their nutrition. However, they're unable to make some very important amino acids that they need to live. And uh, these particular amino acids allow them to develop fully, to mature, and also to produce young. And they can't do it. They don't have what it takes to produce uh, this amino acid on their own. So they have a symbiont. They have microbes living inside of them that actually take some of the nutrients that they get out of the plants and they convert that into the amino acids that they need. And so the question is, how did that symbiotic relationship begin? Uh, we look at that and we see some design there that maybe this uh, uh, did not come about by chance, but rather through design. Now another organism, a termite, which is really well known around the country, also has a symbiont. Termites eat, food, eat uh, wood from your house, but they can't digest it. And so here's a TEM, a transmission electron microscope picture that I took of a symbiont in the gut of the termite, and it's actually digesting the cellulose that the termite eats and so the termite can live.